It's Ken Harbaugh with Against All Enemies on the Midas Touch Network. The Republican Party is tearing itself apart. You hate to see it, but this is what you get when principles are abandoned purely for the sake of power. It's happening on every significant issue right now. Abortion rights, Ukraine funding, border security, you name it. The GOP simply cannot govern because for too long, it has encouraged and empowered members who care only about themselves. And now that is coming back to haunt them. Here's a local news report on Marjorie Taylor Greene's latest Look at Me campaign, her effort to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is not backing down on her threats to unseat House Speaker Mike Johnson. This morning, she sent a letter to her Republican colleagues trying to build support for ousting him. In the letter, Green accused Johnson of failing to deliver on promises and breaking legislative procedural rules. This comes just one day after a town hall. If I had it my way, we would have impeached him a long time ago. Actually, if I had it my way, we would have been successful in our objection on January 6th and he wouldn't even be president. This right-wing Republican from Georgia also condemned her party, saying that if they win the House in November, it would only be because Trump is on the ballot, not because they earned it. Remember, these are Republicans attacking each other, often in the most vicious, personal terms. These aren't debates over policy differences. These are vendettas. A few weeks ago, Kevin McCarthy all but called Matt Gates a pedophile in public. Here's that clip. And I'll give you the truth why I'm not speaker. It's because one person, a member of Congress, wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he slept with a 17-year-old. An ethics complaint that started before I ever became speaker, and that's illegal, and I'm not going to get in the middle. Did he do it or not? I don't know. But an ethics is looking at it. There's other people in jail because of it. And he wanted me to influence it. I cannot remember a time when the personal animosity between members of the same party was this vicious. Sure, elected Democrats disagree with each other, and some of them don't get along. But the behavior of senior Republicans takes this to a whole new level. And there are a couple reasons for it. The first is that they are following the example set by their leader. Former President Trump has not only no sense of decorum, but no understanding of what it means to be respectful and loyal towards others. He is loyal to only one thing, himself. The members of his party are simply following his lead. But there's another, even deeper reason why Republicans are tearing each other to shreds. They don't actually share values. They can't, because whatever set of fundamental beliefs wants to find the Republican Party has been abandoned as the party has acquiesced on every front to its new leader. Even Fox News is starting to worry about this and the effect the infighting is having on the GOP's ability to get anything done. Here's Fox host Maria Bartiromo expressing that frustration to Congresswoman Nancy Mace after she takes a personal shot at Kevin McCarthy. Look, says he's Kevin bring McCarthy to the floor. recruited a puppet to run against me in my Republican primary. You can go to puppetcatherine.com. He recruited somebody that can't win a general election in a purple district. Yes, he's a disgraced former speaker. Uh, so, don't you think you all should stick together in some ways? You are hanging on by a thread in the majority. When are you actually going to unite as a party and get things done? Right. I agree, which is why Kevin McCarthy shouldn't go after fellow Republicans that can win in general elections in purple seats. You can go to nancymace.org and learn more He's about our campaign. He's not even there yet, in. and you're if still you blaming fight Kevin the establishment McCarthy. And fight D.C. Fight somebody like Kevin McCarthy, okay. who's coming after Republicans who can win in November. I spoke with Reed Galen, the co-founder of the Lincoln Project and a former Republican operative, about why the GOP is falling apart the way it is and what that implosion means for the 2024 election. His insights are spot on, especially his observation that there's one thing the MAGA extremists who now run the party hate more than Democrats, and that's each other. Here's me and Reed Galen. Our full interview comes out soon on Burn the Boats. You shared this observation with me once that the only people they hate more than us is themselves. I mean, it really is a den of vipers in that way when fundamental beliefs beliefs aren't undergirding anything you're doing. I mean, it, it leads to just this vicious infighting. 
Yeah, I mean, look, you, you let's take what's going. Let's take an, a, a real example, a real time example, which is Marjorie Taylor Greene is after Speaker Mike Johnson. Right. Okay. Now they got rid of Kevin McCarthy, who was not a true believer, and everybody knew he wasn't a true believer, right? But he was willing to play the game. Um, they got rid of him, and then they got you know a backbencher in Johnson, and now she's after him. Um, and my guess is she's after him simply to scare him away on Ukraine or, or immigration, take your pick, whatever it is. But she doesn't care about the country and she doesn't care about governing. She only cares about making sure that she's in the middle of something and she gets all the attention or as much of the attention as she can. Um, excuse me. Again, if, if any of these guys had to knife one another, metaphorically, of course, to get, to get ahead, they would in a heartbeat, they would not stop. Um, because again, at the end of the day, they don't care about anything, right? It's not about, it's not about the opportunity to serve America. It's about the opportunity to turn Americans into subjects, if that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, it lacks, it, there's no, there's no, there's no coherent morality. There's no coherent philosophy. There's no co coherent political, you know, program. Because again, it's all about, look, they're a gang, Ken. Power, money, territory. That's it. It's Ken Harbaugh on the Midas Touch Network. The film Against All Enemies, which I co-produced with Ben Micellis and this network, is the number one documentary on Apple TV, and it's now available on Amazon. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out, and please leave a review. It really does make a huge difference in helping spread the word. Thanks, Midas Mighty. Let's use our power well. Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs and gives you tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, workout, sleep, and even stress management. All you have to do is breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning and you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs. Then Lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. You can also breathe into it before and after workouts and meals so you know exactly what's going on in your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips to keep you on top of your health game. The key to metabolic health is something called metabolic flexibility. And that's where Lumen really shines. It refers to your body's ability to efficiently switch between using different fuel sources like carbs and fats. There are preferred times to use each and how well you can switch places you on the metabolic flexibility spectrum. Because your metabolism is at the center of everything your body does, optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits, including easier weight management, improved energy levels, better fitness results, better sleep, etc. After getting to know you through your breath, Lumen gives you a metabolic flex score that you can track and improve upon. So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me and use boats to get $100 off your lumen. That's l-u-m-e-n dot m-e and use boats at checkout for $100 off. Thanks, Lumen, for sponsoring this episode. It seems to me like Americans, broadly speaking, are beginning to see that. I mean, they're punishing Republicans, certainly Republican policies, every chance they get at the polls. Uh, I think the, the latest Supreme Court decision in Arizona is a great case study of that and, and what's going to happen as a result. What is your prediction going into the, uh, the 24 election? Um, I hate to, every time I make a prediction, I get it horribly I wrong. So I should just say whatever the opposite is. So let me, let me break it down like this. I can both quantify and qualify how Joe Biden gets reelected. Okay, that doesn't mean he will, but it means I can put together in my head the different coalitions in different states, you know, by number of how many votes he needs or what percentage of the vote he needs to get there. I can qualify why Joe Biden should be reelected, whether or not it's on fundamental decency, calm, policy, whatever it is. I can't quantify how Donald Trump gets reelected in my head because his coalition is smaller, older, whiter more male and more extreme than it was in 16 or 20. He's going out of his way to alienate Republicans like I used to be by saying terrible things about Nikki Haley or flat out saying, if you're a rhino, I don't want you. 
And the only qualification he has is his name is Donald Trump. Right. And so I'd rather be on the Joe Biden side of that equation than the Donald Trump side of that equation. Um, and, you know, you, you, let me just say this, too, is that, yeah, money and politics doesn't buy you victory, but it buys you options and campaigns matter on the margins. Biden has a better campaign, better apparatus, more money. Trump has less money, less, you know, a, a more, you know, whacked out campaign. And he single handedly wrecked his own get out the vote operation by saying he doesn't believe in early or mail in voting. So like just on the mechanics and the logistics of it too, I see it's, I, I, I feel good about Biden, but you know, as you know, Ken, um, it's always the externality, right? Is, is in, in, to be a bit in politics, it's like Thurgood Marshall always said, you know, everybody always forgets about the girlfriend, right? It's always that thing out there that we're not expecting. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.